Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Emma West. I'm a partner at Bouse Fields, a planning, urban design, and community engagement consulting company. I'm also the chair of ULI Toronto. Um, we welcome you today on behalf of the management committee of ULI and our membership committee. And we're pleased to host this event today, ULI Toronto, Hamilton, a bigger picture. Next slide. Um, the city of Hamilton is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which as an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabeg to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We further acknowledge that this land is covered by the Between the Lakes Purchase, 1792, between the Crown and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Today, the city of Hamilton is home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, also known as North America. And we recognize that we must do more to learn about the rich history of this land so that we can better understand our roles as residents, neighbors, partners, and caretakers. So before we get started with our event today, I would like to go through a few housekeeping items. Everyone will automatically be muted throughout the session to ensure that there are no audio interferences. There's closed captioning available for this, se this session. Um, there might be a little delay and it might not be 100% accurate, but, but please be patient with the, the process and you can find the closed captioning at the bottom of your screen where it says live transcript CC. If you have any questions for our speakers, please use the Q&A function and you can also upvote the questions that you see in there by pressing the thumbs up button. And this session is being recorded and will be sent to you following the session. If you'd like to take this to social media, please tag us at, at ULI Toronto and use, use the hashtag AskGreatQuestions. So I'd like to thank our annual sponsors. Without them, um, we can't do any of this work that ULI Toronto does. Today's event is um, would not be possible, as I said. So on behalf of ULI, I would like to thank all of these sponsors for their continued support. We rely on them to provide quality programming and to help drive our mission of creating and sustaining thriving communities. So again, a big thank you to all of these sponsors. Now, we have a very tight one hour to get through with you today. We're thrilled to have this program. Um, it is in a series of these um, events that we've been hosting to explore the content of uh, what's happening in our urban frontiers, in our edge communities. Um, our edge cities. Um, so we've already hosted three other events similar to this with other cities and mayors across the region. And we're thrilled to have the opportunity to hear from Hamilton today. As a chapter or a district council of an international organization with deep roots in North America, ULI Toronto is proud to showcase urban leadership such as what you will hear today from the city of Hamilton. So our program is going to be divided into three sections. First, you'll have remarks from Mayor Eisenberger. Then there will be a panel discussion from staff at the city of Hamilton. And then we will have a Q&A session with you, the audience. So again, a reminder to post your questions in the Q&A and to upvote the questions that you see in there. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Mayor Eisenberger. Mayor Fred Eisenberger was born in Amsterdam and came to Canada with his family when he was eight years old, settling in Hamilton. He is currently serving his third four-year term as mayor. Previously, he served as a member of Hamilton Council, as a chair of the Hamilton Port Authority, and as president and chief executive of the Canadian Urban Institute, where he was involved in the development of leading edge progressive urban policy. 
During his tenure as mayor, Hamilton has been named by the Conference Board of Canada for having Canada's most diversified economy. And in both 2018 and 2020, the Intelligent Community Forum named Hamilton one of the world's top seven intelligent communities. Hamilton's transformation has been notable. A national advanced manufacturing hub with burgeoning life sciences and food processing sectors, strong education and research institutions and creative industries that are attracting new economic investment and vitality to the city. Mayor Eisenberger is focused on achieving continued growth and prosperity, as well as protecting the environment. He was instrumental in declaring a climate emergency in Hamilton, in ensuring Syrian refugees were welcomed and settled into the city, and for putting forward a $50 million proposal to improve affordable housing and reduce po poverty. So without further ado, over to you, Mayor Eisenberger. Thank you very much, Emma, for this uh, opportunity. Thanks to uh, ULI and uh, to all of your sponsors for continuing the good work that you uh, do and, and uh, for having the wisdom to uh, go to your kind of our border communities and uh, understand what's happening in, uh, in other places beyond Toronto. And I, I'm really uh, delighted to be part of that. And uh, I'll share some, uh, hopefully some some thoughts about uh, where Hamilton is and where Hamilton is going and where, where, where we have been. Uh, which I think is, uh, you know, a, a story of renaissance for the city of Hamilton. So I, I think it was Toronto Life magazine that said that uh, that Hamilton was to Toronto what uh, Brooklyn is to New York City. And I, I, you know, there's some truth to that, uh, but it doesn't quite cover, you know, everything that's going on in the city of Hamilton. There, there is a cool factor happening in Hamilton due to the uh, the music scene, the film film scene, restaurant scene. All of that is very much a part of the uh, the renaissance driven by i think cultural capacity and all of that creative creative artistic endeavor i think inspires a lot of not only uh good vibe in the community but uh, good good employment opportunities uh and that is why one of the reasons why we're considered to be one of the most diversified economies in the country because we've had to diversify so if we think back to where we were 50 years ago, where we were essentially an industrial town. Uh, all the major industrial players were here. Uh, the, uh, you know, whether it was uh, farm machinery through international harvester, car manufacturing, uh, you know, tire manufacturing, uh, Procter & Gamble, uh, you know, the whole range of consumer products that were, you know, needed in our broader community, or at least desired in our broader community, was being produced right here in Hamilton in our industrial waterfront. Much of that has gone away. And so, you know, that employment base uh, has shrunk significantly. And although steel and steel related manufacturing is still a, a significant employer, it is by far not the largest employer. And a lot of that has, has been turned into uh, education, health sciences, and a lot of things that we're going to talk about in terms of this renaissance that we're experiencing here in the city of Hamilton. To be, uh, to be uh, identified as a top seven intelligent community through the ICF uh, forum was um, particularly inspiring for our city because you know, when, you're, when you're known as a, a manufacturing city, you're not necessarily known for leading edge innovation and creativity. And certainly that isn't the case for the city of Hamilton anymore. Uh, although uh, you, can, you can certainly see the former manufacturing space that uh, Hamilton used to occupy as very leading edge at the time. Leading edge uh, advanced manufactured uh, farm machinery, uh, leading edge steel products, uh, much of which is now still being produced here in Hamilton with uh, you know, half the amount of people and with twice, twice the amount of output and a lot of work being done in terms of looking for different materials that uh, could, could replace or at least enhance uh, the, uh, the, the steel. So CANMET uh, metallurgical research being housed here right in Hamilton is really a research organization that's looking at how do you marry steel with other alloys to, uh, to make, make products lighter and make them more durable and uh, make them more cost effective. So to, uh, to, to turn to the, uh, the three key areas that uh, are part of our renaissance, as it were, uh, is uh, a hot industrial market, 
Uh, downtown core rejuvenation certainly is at the forefront as well. And uh, lastly, but not, not a, in any way, shape, least, is the industrial bayfront and West Harbor waterfront revi revitalization. So to break that down a little bit, uh, the, uh, the hot industrial market uh, is over 3 million square feet. It's currently under construction across the many business parks across our city. The downtown uh, core re rejuvenation is being achieved through adaptive reuse of uh, affordable office space. Uh, it, it includes a well-educated millennial workforce, and there are some over 3,500 residential units, units under current construction. Uh, I would say that uh, you know housing obviously is a significant part of what any municipality and city needs to focus on today. Uh, I'm particularly proud of one housing project in the east end of the city where I grew up. was a, a geared to income, low income neighborhood that uh, has been has been purchased by a developer in partnership with the city of Hamilton that uh, will turn 107 geared to income units into some 700. Uh, geared to income, affordable housing, and market housing units uh, in, on that particular site. Uh, so that's a that's a real uh, demonstration of how we're attempting to intensify and not necessarily sprawl our city out, but intensify and provide the uh, the range of options for housing that uh, is so so critically important for any city. And then there's the two uh, waterfront. Uh, you know, aspects, the industrial bayfront and the West Harbor waterfront revitalization. Uh, the waterfront revitalization is really wrapped around taking a former uh, Port Authority industrial pier that uh, is now owned by the city of Hamilton and turning that air, entire area into a uh, recreational and housing opportunity. And one of the hallmarks of that waterfront redevelopment on Pier 8 is that we have committed to doing the recreational open space amenities first, and that's being built, uh, built right now. And then leading into that will be the, uh, the waterfront shores development that will uh, allow for some 1200 units to be developed there. Uh, that's part of the, the residential renaissance that's going on in our community. And there are numbers of other projects that are happening that uh, also speaks to kind of the housing opportunities that are coming forward. But this is a particularly exciting one because it's right on the water where lots of people want to live. It's, uh, it's our you know burgeoning waterfront that uh, by comparison we're saying is in the middle of an, an existing neighborhood. And uh, with all due respect to Toronto, we, we don't want to do what Toronto did, which is to tower, tower the waterfront so that it's obliterated from view. And so the maximum height on the, uh, the, uh, the, the the buildings that are going to be put there is eight stories. So it, it actually scales up from the water's edge to a maximum of eight stories uh, further back, closer to, to the existing roadway that leads into this project. So it'll be a um, high density, higher density, medium density, I would say, uh, but, but a livable you know, community neighborhood that uh, will include a number of broader community uh, recreational amenities that I think are going to be very positive. The hot industrial market is uh, has been delightful, uh, sometimes surprising, especially in 2020 when uh, we reached our highest uh, number in terms of uh, building permits. Despite the uh, global pandemic, it reached uh, $1.38 billion in building permit applications. Uh, previous years, previous nine years, all of them were uh, over a billion dollars. Uh, so for Hamilton, that's a significant achievement, and that really indicates that there's a, a massive investment going on here to, uh, to provide not only uh, business opportunities, but employment. Um, there are, uh, there's over 3,000, 3 million, sorry, 3 million square feet of new industrial construction taking place across the city. Uh, the ICI sector is generating about $396 million worth of construction and about 776 buildings are permanent permits are issued in that space uh, annually. So there's a lot of work going on there. The advanced manufacturing supercluster is housed here in the city of Hamilton. It's the uh, federal government's next generation advanced manufacturing effort that really speaks to uh, you know, bringing technology into manufacturing and marrying those two together. And that uh, is certainly an important issue for Hamilton, but for the entire region, in fact. So the, this is a regional approach. We're just delighted that it happens to be uh, headquartered here, but it's uh, it's going to generate 
I think a lot of new innovative uh, opportunities, not only here, but right through throughout the entire entire <laughs> entire greater Toronto Hamilton area. McMaster Innovation Park, one of our leading innovation centers is uh, constructing over 800,000 square feet of custom built wet lab space and office space that uh, is necessary for life science companies to grow. So we're partnering uh, in the development of a bio, bio manufacturing campus at MIP focused on uh, regenerative me medicine based technologies and cell and gene therapies. Uh, the Global Nexus uh, project that uh, uh, McMaster has launched is uh, all about uh, preventing future pandemics and mitigating global health threats. Uh, that uh, project will breathe new life into significant brownfield properties uh, at the MIP uh, location uh, just off of uh, Longwood Road. The uh, Center for Commercialization of Regenerative Medicine is developing a commercialized regenerative medicine based technologies and cell and gene therapies. And uh, then leads into, in my view, what's going on and around our airport. So our airport, John C. Monroe International Airport is the busiest express cargo airport by volume in Canada. And yes, we have some passenger traffic, but that uh, certainly is eclipsed by, by Toronto. We do have WestJet, we do have Swoop. And we do tend to cater to low cost carriers as a niche, but the, uh, the growth of the uh, commercial side uh, with the development of uh, an Amazon fulfillment center and a, a DHL expansion on site, Bridgestone located on site as well, as well as significant growth in the airport employment growth district surrounding the, uh, the airport itself is uh, actually creating an enormous amount of employment opportunity in the range of some 3,500 to 4,500 living wage job, jobs uh, coming forward. Uh, another one of our great resources and assets is the uh, Oshawa Hamilton Port Authority or Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority, recent, recently amalgamated with uh, Oshawa. It uh, continues to provide uh, you know, job opportunities in terms of the, uh, the investments they're making in the port space that uh, will continue to provide opportunities. How's my time so far? I'll, uh, I'll close and wrap up actually, because I think I, we're heading and I could talk all day. Film Renaissance happening in a big way. Um, I, I think some of our Invest Hamilton folks will talk about uh, some of the investments that are happening, including the film production uh, studio that uh, was just recently opened up and, and expansions are foreseen into the future. Um, so let me let me leave it at that. Let me let me just say you know there's lots of other facts that I'm sure our economic development folks will share with you. Uh, but the Renaissance is really twofold. It's uh, it's it's in part commercial industrial, uh, and it's in part residential. It's in part happening in our downtown areas and in, in our other downtowns as an amalgamated city, uh, as well as on some of the uh, very key. Uh, employment opportunity spaces identified on our former industrial water, waterfront, which Stelco, uh, you know, as you know, purchased all of the uh, the former lands that were Stelco and is now looking at repurposing a lot of that land beyond what they need for steel into new employment, high-end employment opportunity. Uh, and I will lastly say that, uh, you know, a, a measure of any city is how well you look after those and beyond the employment opportunities, how well you look after those that are uh, in need of uh, uh, opportunities in our community. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of what we speak about today is really all about uh, and, uh, employment opportunities that can provide uh, opportunities for everyone in our community, but also those that are struggling on the margins that uh, are, need to have employment opportunities even more so than most. And so that uh, is certainly a key part of why employment is so key to the future growth and expansion of our great city. So thank you for this uh, for this opportunity to talk to you about that today. And I, you have a great panel set up with an excellent moderator. And I know that they're gonna share, you know, an awful lot of more detailed information. And uh, I certainly look, to, look forward to hearing their presentation and uh, look forward to the Q&A section a little later on. So Emma, thank you so much for, for giving, giving me the opportunity to share uh, some of these thoughts with uh, your, your viewers and listeners, and uh, I look forward to uh, tuning into the balance of your uh, webcast.
Thank you so much, Mayor Eisenberger. That was an incredible summary of all of the amazing things that are happening in the city right now. And it's such a, a great balance of the residential and commercial and employment. Um, and for those who don't know, Hamilton is also a very beautiful city with many natural areas woven into it. And um, there are so many amazing assets in the city. Um, so now we are going to go to the uh, panel discussion. Um, and just a reminder, if you have have questions, please put them in the Q&A. Um, you can direct those um, at any of the speakers, including the mayor, if you choose to. Um, so now to our panel session. So our moderator today is Paul Burton, a journalist for three decades. Paul is the editor-in-chief of the Hamilton Spectator. And our panel also includes Sue Remack, a business development consultant with the city's economic development division, leading the goods movement sector. Sue also assists with the site selection process for large scale expansions and industrial developments. Tiffany Singh is a planner with the city's planning division with a background in land use development from both private and public sector. Uh, her current role includes being the lead of the Bayfront industrial area strategy, which is a 45 plus year vision and action plan for the city's largest and oldest industrial area. And finally, Carol Murillo is a senior business development consultant with the city of Hamilton's economic development division, commercial districts and small business. She leads the finance, insurance and real estate sector and workforce development. So Paul, over to you. Thanks, Emma, and uh, thank you all for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, you know, I think we've all heard in Hamilton and beyond uh, the comment from uh, colleagues and friends uh, across the country and indeed around the world. Um, usually the question goes something like, wow, Paul, what's what's happening? What's going on in Hamilton? And uh, uh, they are hearing the news uh, that uh, we know a little bit more intimately and uh, the, the kinds of things that the mayor just uh, outlined, you know, science, medicine, art, education, technology, industry, innovation, film, food. I mean, it's uh, kind of a city that seems to be uh, firing on all cylinders uh, at the moment. And it's a, it's a, 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 a refreshing view for, for many people. Um, I wonder, um, Sue, if we might start with you and just uh, maybe talk a little bit about the industrial scene and um, the kinds of areas that uh, are being developed and open for development in, in Hamilton and what kind of companies are, are establishing um, operations here in Hamilton. Sorry, just had to unmute myself there. Okay, can everybody hear me? Great. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking ULI for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for joining us. Thanks to you, Paul, my fellow panelists, and to everyone uh, in the call today. My name is Sue Remack. I'm a business development consultant with the City of Hamilton's Economic Development Division. And a big part of my job is the site selection process, helping new and existing uh, businesses expand. Uh, the mayor provided a great introduction uh, to uh, the city of Hamilton. Uh, thank you, Mayor Fred. I just wanted to quickly touch on uh, two items, the uh, city of Hamilton and the diverse economy. Uh, the Conference Board of Canada does a ranking of the 13 largest economies in Canada. And I think it's for the last seven or eight years, Hamilton has been ranked as having the most diverse economy. Um, and with this diverse economy comes a diverse labor force. Um, being located within the center of the Greater Golden Horseshoe or the GTAJ, uh, within a one hour radius, that labor force expands to approximately 2.4 million people. So I believe that this is kind of a, a, one of the other factors as to why you're seeing a lot of the growth here. So uh, I'm just going to get started and, and, um, and run through all of these projects of the 3 million that, that we're discussing. So if you want to follow through on the map, uh, location number one on the map, the Flamborough Business Park, is the first area I'll be discussing. Uh, we have L3 Harris uh, that is um, um, headquartered in Melbourne, Florida. They're currently constructing their location here, a facility 
on 20 acres of land. It's about 330,000 square feet in size. And L3 Harris is a large tech and engineering company. With this facility, they're bringing about 1,200 new jobs. We also have CHCH, which is Hamilton's local television news outlet. They've moved operations of the a studio and office space into about 15,000 square feet into this business park as well. The next location, if you look at location number four on the map, this is the Red Hill Business Park. Um, some of the projects that are occurring in the, in the uh, Red Hill Business Park, Corbeck Inc., which is headquartered out of Quebec, is a galvanizing plant and they're opening up a new 100,000 square foot facility on about 15 acres of land. Then we have um, another project, Penta Properties. Uh, they've broken ground on a $62 million investment in the park. The tenant is a local food supplier, uh, Sierra Supply Chain, and they're expanding their, uh, expanding their cold service freezer and cooler operation from 93,000 square feet to 250,000 square feet. We also have Walters Group. They're a local steel manufacturer. Uh, they just completed an 80,000 square foot uh, facility. And uh, lastly, we have Vicano Construction. They're a regional developer for Brantford. They're constructing uh, a new 115,000 square foot speculation build. If you look on the map to the gray shaded area, uh, the mayor had mentioned the John C. Monroe Hamilton International Airport. There we have uh, DHL Express headquartered in Bonn, Germany. Uh, they're completing construction of a 220,000 square foot facility at a cost of about $100 million. Uh, DHL currently operates at the airport in a 40,000 square foot facility. So this expansion will be over four times the size, making it the largest hub in Canada. And I believe third or fourth in North America. We also have KF Aerospace uh, headquartered out of Kelowna, BC. Um, they expanded their operations at the airport as well, completing their second phase of the expansion with two new wide body MRO facilities, that's maintenance, repair and overhaul. Um, it, and it's totaling about 150,000 square feet of new space. So this expansion actually makes KFA Canada's largest commercial MRO. Um, next, we have location number five on the map. This is the Airport Employment Growth District, or we call it the AEGD. Um, and this business park um, is, is the newest park to come online in Hamilton. The total area boundary is, I'm going to say about 1,200 acres, uh, but just keep in mind that uh, some of the roads and, and, and servicing will be carving up that space. So just to discuss uh, some of the um, developments happening there, Panatoni development, uh, Panatoni uh, was one of the first uh, large scale developers to uh, come into the city. They purchased an 82 acre uh, property in the park. They're completing phase one of a 265,000 square foot spec building, which they currently have two tenants and I believe they may have room for one other. And then phase two of Panatoni's um, development originally included a 660,000 square foot spec building, but they quickly had to pivot as did we at the city uh, to accommodate a new end user, um, Amazon, which is headquartered in Seattle, Washington. Um, they will be uh, opening up a new 855,000 square foot fulfillment center in the business park. Um, although the footprint is about is 855,000 square feet, when you incorporate the mezzanine levels, um, you're looking at well over uh, 1 million GFA. Uh, not listed on the uh, on the map, but I quickly have to mention in the Ancaster Business Park, BF Goodrich, headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. They're constructing a 450,000 square foot distribution center for Goodyear tires on a 60 acre parcel of land and they have room for expansion. Um, and the last area, uh, location number three on the map and the, and the mayor referenced McMaster Innovation Park, I'll call it MIP. Um, MIP is located in the uh, West Hamilton Innovation District. Uh, it's a business park that is dedicated to innovation technology and manufacturing. MIP is a for-profit entity. Uh, dedicated to growing the biomanufacturing and distribution. And they currently manage about 700,000 square feet of space. Uh, some of the businesses in, in that area, the, uh, the mayor, again, the mayor mentioned CanMet, um, McMaster Automotive Resource Center, dedicated to electric vehicles, Innovation Factory, uh, which serves as a catalyst for tech, as well as McMaster University, which is Canada's largest post-secondary health research institute. 
um, MIP is in the process of a massive expansion. So they will be adding 2.1 million square feet of space. And so this park will operate as a, a discovery, testing, approval, manufacturing, and distribution hub, making it the biomanufacturing capital of Canada. MIP will be uh, the bookend to uh, the Toronto Mars Discovery District, creating this Hamilton uh, Toronto Innovation Corridor and making it the, the most intense and largest innovation district in Canada. Uh, part of the expansion, again, the mayor mentioned, uh, there will be over 1 million square feet of new dry and wet chemical lab space with offices. And just to put that in perspective, uh, the province of Ontario is virtually out of lab space. Uh, demand for this type uh, of space is extremely high and the supply is virtually non-existent. So um, this type of uh, uh, space was needed prior to the COVID situation. However, in hindsight, it has been realized that this lab space, um, along with the access to the markets, the collaboration with Toronto, it's definitely required and will continue to be required well after uh, the pandemic. Uh, MIP will likely attract large multinational companies looking to locate within Canada's largest technology life sciences hub and capitalize on this expertise, the talent production and distribution of Canada's most advanced biomanufacturing products. Uh, the project is estimated to cost about 1.1 billion, that's with a B, billion dollars. Uh, and it'll increase the number of jobs from roughly 800 to uh, up to 5,000. Uh, considering the time restraints, I've kept this at a very high level, more than happy to answer any questions in the Q&A uh, or offline. If you need to learn more about MIP, you can go to miptoday.ca. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks uh, very much, Sue, for that. Uh, um... Carol, I wonder um, further to the uh, mayor's description of a downtown renaissance, uh, lots of um, people talking about it as a hip and happening place, but it's also a, uh, an employment, a big employment center. And I wonder if you might outline for us, you know, what kind of investment opportunities are there, who's moving in, the kinds of spaces that might be available and indeed, uh, what the city might be doing in terms of financial incentives for it. Great, thank you. Uh, so thank you, Paul, and uh, you know, thank you to ULI and to our panelists that are uh, excited to hear more <coughs> about what's happening in Hamilton today. Uh, so for many uh, in the audience who know the Hamilton story, um, whether you know a little or uh, you know a lot about the incredible transformation that's happening right now. And you know what you, you've heard today is that Hamilton is a city that continues to draw talent, investment, and just keeps getting better. You know, we've moved away from a city of decline 10 plus years ago to, you know, incredible growth and this renaissance that uh, the mayor uh, described to, to the group. Today we have a core, a downtown that has, that is vibrant, that has new condos, hotels, co-working spaces, new restaurants, uh, and many new companies. And these new residents and workers, you know, they want to be a part of this community and be a part of Ontario's second largest urban offering. And, uh, you know, you talked, Paul, your question about investment. I know Sue's uh, talked about some incredible uh, innovation from MIP and, and, and across our industrial districts. But, you know, what's fascinating right now about downtown is that you're starting to see all of these projects and plans come together. Uh, the Gore District, you know, beautiful part of the heart of the city. It's a beautiful park with over 100,000 square feet of boutique office space that's recently been completed and being built. And all of that is a part of the evolution of the downtown that, that has made it a compelling place to invest, stay and live. And the mayor talked, kicked off, you know, the incredible residential boom that's happened in this community with over 3000 units, uh, 700 of those being completed recently, another 2,500 in construction and in process. And what's even more impressive is uh, we have about 10,000 plus residential units in discussions right now in formal consultation. So 
uh, you know, Hamilton, this description as being an edgy frontier uh, community, uh, we have become a long-term attraction for residents. Uh, but the other exciting part of this incredible growth is an area that we've started to, to focus on uh, and gain traction is the innovation and tech industry that wants to be in a community that fits its culture. And when you looked at uh, when you look at communities like Brooklyn and New York City, we see a foundation of residential growth that was fueled by industrial and heritage buildings and today is an epicenter of tech. Uh, Sue talked about MIP, you know, our Mars West, and that's attracting talent. And our hope is that those companies that started MIP, you know, they can as they continue to grow, they could land in a new modern or brick and beam office space in downtown Hamilton. And this evolution of downtown, you know, with the addition of the restaurants, our thriving food scene, the growth of the digital community, it's a place that companies want to grow. And, uh, you know, to, to your question of who's moving in, you know, our biggest story last year was landing Q4, our downtown story was landing Q4. Um, that's a fintech, a financial technology company in uh, headquartered in Toronto with offices in New York and London. And they leased close to 20,000 square feet of space in downtown Hamilton and hired over 100 plus tech workers last year. And when you look at that, you know, with projects next door uh, in downtown, you look at uh, Leuna with the Cobalt project in the Gore Park. They have a proposed about two 30 story towers with over 500 units, commercial at grade. A couple of other projects. Uh, last week, uh, Slate Asset Management Group approved at Planning Council a project of over 700 units. And just further north, you have uh, Bentle Green Oak is proposing several towers with over 800 residential units. And that's just a couple of examples of you know, what projects happening right now. In terms of some of the unique spaces, uh, you know, I've talked a bit about the high rise development, but we also have several mid rise projects scattered throughout the downtown. Uh, Style Park is a new office project bringing about 60,000 square feet of reimagined heritage space, uh, office space to the market. And also Melrose at 212 King William, Emblem at 1 Jarvis Street. You know, these are projects uh, with about 14 stories and we'll be bringing a total of 300, 600 new residential units. And it's this mix of residential and office is what we believe will continue to attract companies to the core uh, with our recent success of landing tech groups like Q4 uh, that uh, are attracted to our heritage and brick and beam. Uh, that attracts the tech sector and, and they want to be in these unique spaces. But this also, this example also speaks to the hub and spoke model where a company may have its headquarters in a downtown urban center and is looking for smaller regional offices where their employees live. And we've started to see that model uh, that was already taking shape in Hamilton. So for us, we know it's that we're on the right path. Uh, and as uh, several have mentioned already, you know, having incredible restaurants and, you know, uh, our geographic uh, waterfalls, you know, 10 to 15 minutes from our downtown is also a bonus that attracts these groups. And I think you also mentioned, Paul, uh, the financial incentives. Uh, and I'll, I'll put, we have quite quite a, a number of, a suite of incentives, and I'll put that in the chat afterward. Uh, but, you know, this uh, has led to, you know, the growth of our community. And our suite of incentives range from facade grants, loan programs, to tax increment-based grants. Uh, for the uh, for, in the interest of time, I'll just highlight a couple of them uh, that have been a part of a lot of the projects I've mentioned today. Uh, the Hamilton Tax Increment Base Grant is a projected tax increase grant on a redeveloped site and is paid back over a five-year period. We have our multi-residential loan program, and that is a five-year loan up to $4 million per development based on 25% of the cost to construct budget at 0% interest. And our, our DC exemption as well, currently in our downtown community improvement plan, they are 50% exempt. Uh, that will be dropping to 40 in July. And for office uh, building developments, it will remain at 70%. Uh, for all of those suite of incentives, we're actually doing a review right now and we'll be bringing that back to council. Uh, but what we've heard in our consultation is that 
uh, from the business community is that these programs have been instrumental to bring investment into the city. So that's a, a quick snapshot of uh, many projects. <laughs> Thanks, Carol, for the uh, a lot of information uh, in a short period of time. We appreciate that. Uh, Tiffany, I wonder if you can uh, tell us quickly a little bit about uh, what's happening on the waterfront and uh, some of the unique spaces uh, uh, that are that are there and uh, some of the investment opportunities and uh, that exist in the industrial lands. All right, so there is a lot happening, as uh, the mayor alluded to earlier. So I would say that there is a lot changing and some of those changes are large transformational kind of changes that will evidently <coughs> impact um, the landscape of Hamilton's waterfront and other changes are smaller and over time their cumulative effect will be more evident. But overall, I think um, what we see today will be very different in the next decade. Um, so I think it's probably easiest if I talk about the different precincts or areas of change um, in a geographic order from probably west to east um, and provide a little bit of historical context text for those that are listening who may not um, know Hamilton well. So most people do know that um, by the late 70s, Hamilton had established itself as kind of Canada's largest industrial landscape and the largest steel cluster in Canada. And with these accolades came some environmental concerns due to the drastic changes of the natural shoreline. We're talking about 600 hectares of infill that took place to expand port and industrial um, operations. So by the early 90s, there was a framework for transformation that began through public and private investments and partnerships with um, local environmental remediation groups. Um, and planning wise, there was this conscious decision that the area west of Wellington Street would be kind of people oriented space and that the area east of Wellington towards the Skyway Bridge would continue to be used for vital economic industrial activity. So to the west, um, some of those early planning decisions included remediation projects such as Bayfront Park, the Pier 5 to 7 reconstruction, Gateway Park, and policy changes such as the setting sales secondary plan. And all of that has really paved the way for the transformation that's unfolding today. Um, so on the west end, directly west of West Harbor Go Station, that's a lot of west, um, is the Tiffany Barton area. So that's a 20 acre parcel that the city had initially purchased with plans for a stadium and those plans changed. Um, but now that area is slated for a film industry precinct that the mayor alluded to earlier. So generally this plan calls for 15 acres of commercial space in kind of a campus formation which would include um, a large studio kind of anchoring the center, um, surrounded by facilities for pre and post production, as well as ancillary services related to the broader creative arts and film industry. And then there are some residential opportunities along Barton Street. So this development directly supports the economic growth that Hamilton is seeing with within its film sector. And the film industry is actually Canada's third largest film cluster. And it speaks to this trend of more companies exploring the logistics of locating closer to where their talented workforce actually live. So then moving east along the waterfront, the next um, big area experiencing change are piers five, six, and seven. So this area has four specific development blocks, but it's generally envisioned to still continue to be largely for public amenity and recreational purposes. And, um, has some opportunities for related commercial development. Um, I think that there's also um, in the plans a uh, flexible pavilion space that's um, envisioned as being kind of a, a great space for outdoor events and an outdoor market. So directly abutting that area, again moving east, is Pier 8, which has garnered a lot of media attention, which the mayor's already kind of spoken to. Um, and so this is a 30 acre parcel developed, um, being developed for the notable Waterfront Shores community containing just over 1600 residential units and 13,000 square meters of commercial and institutional space. So Pier 8 is actually um, being physically transformed right now as we speak with the construction of Cops Pier, which is a new public space being developed along the northern and eastern edges of the pier. Um, and it is slated to open, I believe, this July. 
So the development activity that we're seeing kind of um, in the Tiffany Barton and the peers five to eight area are bringing to fruition that framework of decision making and policy changes towards transformation um, for more people oriented spaces which I kind of alluded to earlier. So that decision-making and that framework, we're, we're seeing that come to light today. So that brings us to the area east of Wellington Street and the project that I am working most closely with, which is the Bayfront Industrial Area Strategy. So this area that I'm referring to is Wellington to Woodward Avenue or Piers 10 to um, Pier 27 um, and the CN Rail North to the harbor. So we're talking about 1600 hectares of land um, that is home to over 1400 jobs currently and generates about 25 million in annual tax revenue. So compared to the other employment areas of the city that Sue spoke to, the Bayfront provides the highest total assessment at nearly 1.2 billion due to in part its large size, but also the presence of high value heavy industrial use, including Hamilton steel cluster. Um, which produces 60%, I believe, of all steel produced in Canada. So it is home to the largest port in Ontario. It has direct rail access. It has highway access that allows it to be within 20 minutes of an international airport and 45 minutes to the US border. So despite these transportation logistical pros, um, it is undeniable that this area could and should still be improved. Um, and that is kind of what the Bayfront Industrial Area Strategy is all about. So it is a 45 plus year vision and action plan that seeks to really just encourage efficient use of land, attract growth and investment, and improve the environmental conditions and image of the city's largest and oldest industrial area for continued productivity. So phase one of this project um, was conducted really by Deloitte and they did a market overview. And I think there's one statement that was really um, well put at the end of their summary. And it said that Bayfront continues to be in a stronger position than is commonly perceived by the market. From steel to advanced manufacturing, the Bayfront can once again reemerge as Hamilton's innovation hub. So a part of their recommendation was this necessity to really establish a vision and an action plan and ensure that these legacy sectors like steel maintain a strong position while expanding into new sectors that complement and diversify this employment area, but also to ensure more efficient land use um, and help build that supply. So efficient use of land is kind of key here um, to answer your question, because many perceive this area to have a lot of vacancy. However, approximately 97% of the area is actually occupied by an active use. So landowners could consolidate their operations, modernize their storage needs and bring land and building supply to the market. And we are seeing exactly that play out by some of our large tenants. Um, so that is really where the bigger investment opportunities exist in this area. So phase two of the project is where we're currently at right now, which is the visioning and strategy. Um, and this phase has involved heavy engagement. Um, one of the key objectives that has derived from this, these talks has been about how to build resiliency in this provincially significant employment zone. And that last bit has really evolved into a conversation about creating a modern advanced manufacturing innovation hub, um, a campus in this area. So we're seeing this as a partnership amongst large tenants, local institutions and multi-level government um, involvement to create a collaborative space that supports the advanced manufacturing startups and create synergies, but is not in competition with what is going on at MIP that is more kind of life sciences derived. And then this is more advanced manufacturing with steel being a big player. So um, I think it's this idea of a campus, both the film industry campus to the West and this advanced manufacturing innovation campus in the East that will create some really exciting, robust changes along Hamilton's waterfront that will match the existing or the upcoming residential development that we're currently seeing unfold. So I think it's that it's these same employment opportunities that are also what makes Hamilton's waterfront very unique in comparison to other Great Lakes cities. 
Thanks very much, Tiffany. In the interest of time, I'll go straight to you, Emma. And thank you very much to all the panelists. Great, thanks everyone. It, the challenge with these uh, events that we have is that the discussion is so rich that you know we run tight on time. We've got some amazing questions in the Q&A. And just to point out for those of you who have posted questions that we won't have a chance to get to, um, we do record these and we do make sure that the participants see those questions. Um, and you know we, we keep track of what's in those questions because it can also uh, help with future programs and discussions um, through ULI as well. So recognizing the time, I'm going to ask a few quick ones. Um, so if you can keep your answers brief, I'm going to try and combine too. Um, there, there have been a few questions about the impacts of COVID and I know the mayor talked about how Surprisingly, there was still a lot of activity, but have there been changes with respect to, say, what's happening in the downtown? Um, it, it sounds like from an industrial or warehouse perspective, there's been quite a bit of activity. So any changes related to COVID and what you're seeing happening in the city? You're saying that one over to me, Emma? That would be great. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, so uh, clearly, small business uh, has been impacted, and uh, but we're not we're not surprised. And this is the surprising part for me is we're not seeing a significant slowdown in residential construction. We're not seeing a significant slowdown. In fact, an acceleration on the commercial uh, you know development, especially around the airport. I think I'm mean, to rationalize that around uh, you know the fulfillment center and the. The move to the uh, the click economy is certainly accelerating the demand for distribution centers, and that's certainly uh, you know well well positioned in and around our airport. Uh, but we're not, and we're not seeing a slowdown in terms of new businesses looking to expand or continue to develop their uh, their expansion. So, from the from a commercial, industrial, residential construction perspective, we've not seen a whole lot of impact. And in fact, it's been very positive, surprisingly positive. In fact, some of our economic development folks might not be surprised. I'm surprised. Uh, but having said that, uh, you know, small, small, medium-sized businesses, uh, they're all struggling like, uh, like we all are, uh, you know, throughout the country. So from that perspective, there's going to be, uh, no doubt, a, uh, a bit of a renaissance in terms of people assessing their kind of office space requirements uh, that we're all going to go through, I think. Uh, so we're no, we're no different than that. And, that, you know, and that, that is yet to be told. I think that story is yet to be told once this pandemic is behind us. It's interesting, um, Bowsfields opened our Hamilton office uh, a few months before the pandemic struck. And, um, you know, we're eager to be a little more active in it, but the, that day will come. Um, a question perhaps for Sue related to the McMaster Innovation Park. Are there other uses contemplated within that park, um, like residential or other supportive uses to make it a mixed use? And then alternatively, are there other life science related um, activities going on in places outside of MIP? Right. Um, thank you so much for the question. Um, with respect to MIP, um, they are in the um, planning stages. I would direct anyone um, who's interested to um, review their website, miptoday.ca. Um, or you can contact me directly and I will put you in, in direct contact with Ty Shattuck. He's the CEO of MIP. There are, just a quick overview, there are other uses um, that are um, slated to go in. I, I believe there is a small residential component, but it predominantly will be kind of a one-stop shop, if you will. Um, as I mentioned um, briefly, um, you're looking at lab space, you're looking at offices, um, you're looking at advisory uh, type uh, committees, uh, engineering space. So it will be um, quite a, a diverse mix, if you will, um, with respect to biomanufacturing. Um, to the second part of your question, um, uh, the life sciences outside of MIP, uh, I can say that that is an asset. Um, Hamilton 
um, does boast a very large life sciences uh, sector outside of Hamilton. In economic development, we actually have a colleague of mine, Carolyn Reed, a business development consultant who is dedicated to that sector. Um, in the Flamborough Business Park, I had um, um, mentioned uh, a, a couple of um, new developments there, uh, but just recently Stryker, um, their Canadian headquarters is located uh, in the Flamborough Business Park, very um, uh, high-tech health sciences. And also, I think it's very important to mention, we have six hospitals here in Hamilton, um, and we also have um, uh, McMaster University, uh, which also happens to have a uh, medical school. And the, we're fortunate enough to have um, uh, uh, McMaster University kind of right in our backyard. There's a division of it within MIP, but McMaster University as a whole uh, uh, has a standalone. Very large. Um, it is actually Canada's largest post-secondary health research institute. So it's uh, the, the school itself has been ranked in the top 100 universities globally. Um, and But when it comes to um, the health research, they've ranked as high as the top 10 in the world. Um, so the, the life sciences is a very, very large industry here in Hamilton. And we're absolutely uh, proud of our accomplishments here. Proud to have uh, McMaster University in our backyard. Uh, I should mention as well, we have Mohawk College that, that has a wonderful program in the health sciences as well. And again, uh, more than happy to connect with anyone um, afterwards, I'm certain uh, you could provide our, our contact information. Definitely. And I think we are going to have to do that for all of the other questions. We always have a commitment to end our events on time. Um, and there are so many questions related to intensification and transit and um, net zero communities and sustainability and um, uh, other matters as well, but we're not going to be able to get to those because we do want to get everyone out of here on time. So thank you all very much um, for participating today. Um, we really appreciate hearing what is happening in Hamilton. It's an important part of the success of the broader region. Just a couple of quick um, notes on events coming up. Um, on Thursday, we have an event in our provincial policy series related to the Conservation Authorities Act changes. And then also in our step up series, advancing the middle of your career. Also on Thursday, we have an event. So thank you all so much again. Thank you to all of the people who attended today. Um, I think there was amazing conversation and let's continue it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.